the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Can you turn to your neighbor and say Merry Christmas? Merry Christmas. Can you give somebody a smile offering? Somebody far away. Just give them a smile and say Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to celebrate. Hallelujah. I don't want to be a disobedient child. If there is any family in this church today that has not received a Christmas gift, if there is any family in this church today, your family you have not received since the beginning, uh, towards this end of the year, nobody has brought any present to you. Please see the King Jackson Chitanda and Pastor Deshi. If your family has not received any gift today, no member of this family we stay this Christmas period without a gift. So if your family has not received any gift, whether from friends or from anyone, please see the King Ch Jackson Chitanda and Pastor Deshi and my wife as well. See them immediately after the service. You are not permitted to go without a present in this year. You are important to God. If man does not recognize you, your heavenly father recognize you. God bless you. Father, we thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for this privilege to see another Christmas. Another December 25. The remembrance of your gift to mankind, the birth of our son, of your son, Jesus Christ. May it continue to be a time of refreshing, a time of reconciliation, a time of remembrance, a time of coming back to you in the mighty name of Jesus. No matter how far away we might have gone, Lord, help us to use this period as another opportunity to come back to the foot of your throne and to lie down before you and, and receive this precious gift of reconciliation to come back to you again Lord and embrace you and, and say that we are sorry for the separation from you and, and to reconcile again with you Lord hallowed be your name Lord blessed be your name in Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He is the reason for the season. Can I get um, Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6? Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. Praise the Lord. Isaiah chapter 9. Verse 6. Okay, I will just quickly get. Okay. For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Praise the Lord. I have a quote here that I came across recently, if, um, if Technica has it. Um, my topic, our theme for the month, it's going to be a brief one. Today is Christmas, so I'm sure the turkey, all the turkey is prepared at home and all the salads and, you know, uh, <laughs> praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's beautiful to be in Canada 
to witness a white Christmas again. And, you know, I was driving very early this morning to work, and I did not know there was snow overnight. I did not know, praise the Lord. <laughs> so I woke up very early in the morning, and luckily I have a contractor who comes to clear the driveway. And I was opening the garage, and I saw somebody clear, and then I saw the mountain of snow. I said, welcome to Canada. <laughs> Can you say to somebody, welcome to Canada? <laughs> it's a beautiful, beautiful. I took pictures and I sent back to Nigeria. Um, people are excited. People are saying, wow. <laughs> Hallelujah. I have a quotation here. I'm just going to, you know, I have a number of slides. I'm just take one or two slides because we don't want it to be a very long uh, message. I'm not here to preach, praise the Lord. We're just here to, you know, remind ourselves of the visitation of the King of Kings. Um, uh, Technica, if you look at the fourth slide, I came across this quote recently. If you look at the fourth slide, it says, a thousand times in history, a baby has become a king, a thousand times in history, a baby has become a king. But only once in history has a king become a baby. Hallelujah. Only once in history has a king become a baby. Praise the Lord. We're discussing the Lord, our righteousness. And today we are talking about the visitation, the divine visitation of the Lord, our righteousness. Praise the Lord. If we look at Psalms chapter 8, verse 3 and verse 4, it says, When I consider the heavens, the works of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained. What is man that thou art mindful of him? And what is the son of man that thou visitest him? Praise the Lord. What is man that thou art mindful, verse 4, please. What is man that thou art mindful of him? And what is the son of man that thou visitest him? Praise the Lord. The visitation of the king of kings, the divine visitation of the Lord of righteousness. If we look at, like I say, we we'll just spend a few minutes and just kind of discuss amongst ourselves about this beautiful gift from God. If you look at the, my next slide, if you look at Exodus chapter 3, Exodus chapter 3, I'll read verse 13 and verse 14. And Moses said unto God, please, wherever we read, just bear it in mind, because I'll come back and make reference to that, uh, like Psalms chapter 8. Exodus chapter 3, verse 13 and verse 14. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and I say to them, The God of your fathers hath sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? Verse 14. And the Lord answered unto Moses and said, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am that I am has sent me unto you, the visitation of the almighty God, the king of righteousness. 
And, you know, I was looking, I was listening to a message recently about the visitation of the Almighty God. And, you know, when the Lord said to Moses, I am that I am has sent you unto them. Just say to them, I am that I am has sent me you unto them. You know, Moses was saying to God, who are you? What will I say? Moses was saying to God, who are you? Who are you to me? And who are you? I can just hear a voice. I can see a bush that is burning in, in the wilderness. And, and, the, and the tree, is, the bush is not consumed, but there is fire. And I can hear a voice. And the voice is a thundering voice. But who are you to us? Who are you? to me, who is visiting us, who is speaking to us. Because when I was a little child, I was just taken, relocated and translocated into, into the palace of Pharaoh. There is a king. And that's all I know. But I knew there was an emptiness within me. There was something lacking within me. There was a void within me. Uh, and I've been carrying this void for a very long time. This emptiness for a very long time. And, and I want to find out, are you the person I've been looking for? And I traveled all the way because I knew there was a void within me. And I was Searching for this void, the, the fulfillment of this void. I even went to the extent of being zealous and I killed an Egyptian. In the process of searching for that thing that is missing. And now I ran away and I ran to Midian. And I met a Midian priest. But I realized, no, this is not what I'm looking for. Yes, he's a priest. Yes, he's a Midianite. But this is not what I'm looking for. Now I want to ask you, are you what I've been looking for? And the king of kings replies, yes, I am that I am. And when you listen to that Hebrew word, Yahweh, I am that I am. The connotation is I am everything that you are made of. I am the very essence of your existence. I am your life. The closest that we come across that word in the beginning of Genesis was in Genesis chapter 2 when he breathed into man and man became a living being. And so that I am, that being is the Lord, that is the breath that we breathe. Praise the Lord. And he said to Moses, I am everything. I am the life. I am the person that gave you life. I am your life, your existence, your breath. I am that I am. There's no other way to qualify me. And so it encompasses, just like we read in the book of Isaiah chapter 9. It encompasses Jehovah Sikenu, the Lord our righteousness, and Jehovah Rapha, and Jehovah Ra, and Jehovah Nisi, the Lord our banner, and Jehovah Jireh, the Lord our provider, and Jehovah Elohim, the almighty God. And it encompasses everything in everything. He said, I am everything you have been searching for. I am that emptiness that I've that you've been searching for. And Moses became filled with the fullness of God. Praise the Lord. Because if you look at that Genesis chapter 2 verse 7, man separated himself from God. Man went away from God. Because after God poured himself, he poured the I am, his being into man. Man at a point said, I want to go my own way. 
I want to be my own boss. I want to be right in my own eyes. And so man separated himself from God, from the almighty God. And so from the beginning of that separation, there has been that void and, and the emptiness. And some people use maybe drugs or alcohol to try to fill up that void and that emptiness. And, and some people are searching for God and they say, who are you? Where are you, O oh Lord? And then the Lord sent his son, Jesus Christ, to come back to begin to reconcile himself back to man. But there's something interesting. There's something interesting. You have to accept that gift in order to be reconciled with him. So Jesus Christ is God coming back again because when man was separated in the garden of Eden and said, I want to live in my own righteousness. I want to live right in my own eyes. You know the first thing the man did? Man killed his brother. Why? That's the, that's the understanding of man about being right. See, how can I be in the sun and I'm tilling the ground? You, you're just a shepherd. You're under a shade somewhere, under a tree, and you're watching after sheep. And suddenly, the Lord accepted your sacrifice more than my own sacrifice. And I'm the one under the sun, and I'm sweating, and I'm tilling the ground. Why should God accept your sacrifice more than my sacrifice? That is what man understands by being right. And so the first thing man did when he became separated from God, he killed his brother. That's the first thing man understood. And God said in the book of Isaiah chapter 64, your righteousness is like filthy rag before me. Your righteousness does not make sense. You just want to be right for yourself. And so man became void and empty. And then man has been searching for God. Say, God. And Moses said, who, who are you to me? What do I call you? Are you this void that I've been looking for? Are you this thing that I've been waiting for? And God said, yes, I am that I am. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And if we look at the next slide, it says that a gift is not a gift until it is accepted. A gift, we're talking about the visitation of the Almighty God. And the second point is acceptance of the visitation. So number one, visitation. Number two, acceptance of the visitation. Number three, maintenance of the visitation. And so number two says acceptance of the visitation. Acceptance of that precious king that became a baby to reconcile man to God. And if you do not accept, if we do not accept a gift, that gift is null and void. So as we begin to round up, I will read a verse and then I'll tell us about accepting this great gift. John chapter 1 verse 12. John chapter 1 verse 12. As many as received him to them he gave power to come into the family of God. So when God gave, he said for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that those who believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And I came across a very striking story that talks about accepting of the gifts. And it was in 1833 in the United States of America, in Philadelphia to be precise, that a man named George Wilson was convicted of a crime and he was to die. And in those days, in 1833, he was to die by hanging. In those days, there was no firing squad, or electric chair, or pain, painless injection. It was to die by hanging. 
because he was convicted. And what happened? He had spent a few years, two years in prison from 1831 to 1833. And in 1833, the president of the United States of America, Andrew Jackson, signed a law to pardon George Wilson and say, you are no longer going to die. You have been pardoned. And what happened? It had never been a problem before. So they ran to the prison, his family, his friends, the, the authorities. They said, Wilson, Wilson, Mr. Wilson, Mr. Wilson, President Jackson of the United States has pardoned you. You are free to go. And Judge Wilson said, wait a minute, I never asked for a pardon. I refuse the pardon. I refused the pardon. And it became a conundrum, a legal conundrum that has become established since 1833. Because the president is the most powerful person. He can do whatever he likes. And so what do we do? Do we forcefully take him out of prison? Because the president has said he can go. He should not die. Or what do we do to Mr. Wilson? It became... It's, they had never encountered it before. And you know what happened? How serious it was. It went all the way to the Supreme Court of the United States, August in 1831, August 31st, 1831. And the judgment was the United States versus Wilson. The United States versus Wilson. The president is more, more powerful than you. He has pardoned you. And the Supreme Court judgment was very shocking. And they said, a pardon is a contract between two parties. Actually, they use the word deed, D-E-E-D. -E -E but let's call it contract for the sake of simplicity. A pardon is a contract between two parties. And so the first party to sign is the president or the governor. But a pardon must be signed by the second party, the person being pardoned, receiving the pardon. Otherwise, the pardon is null and void and invalidated. And so it became established, actually made its way into the Constitution of the United States. And so they had to rewrite the pardon and President Jackson signed. So in the past, you just, you know, pardon somebody. Now you must sign. And then the person has to sign the second line. And they came back to the prison. They said, oh, Mr. Wilson, Mr. Wilson, the president has signed this contract according to the Supreme Court law. And he said, I will not sign. I want to remain in the death row. Acceptance of divine visitation. You must accept the divine visitation. The king that was born and has come to give us life. Imagine if Moses said, oh, you are, I am, you are the person I've been looking for. I reject you. That's okay. But Moses said, yes, this is what I've been looking for. This is what I've been waiting for. What have you been waiting for? Perhaps you came from far, like myself, thousands of kilometers from Nigeria. Perhaps you were firebrand in Nigeria. And then suddenly you have found yourself separating from God. And your spiritual temperature is becoming as cold as the weather. Some people's spiritual temperature is reading minus 50 degrees centigrade. <laughs> Feels like minus 100. It feels like my, it's minus 50. It feels like spiritual. And you say, let's leave Nigeria now. We've come to a different place. Let's take it cool. Guy, take it easy. And the Lord is calling you back. You say, I want the fire to explode again. I want to reconnect with you again. I want to be your friend. I want you to accept this beautiful gift. Can we rise up and begin to pray and say, God... What a beautiful
beautiful Christmas morning. The Lord can do everything and send his son. But you have to accept this divine visitation. You have to accept this divine visitation. You have to say, Lord, set me on fire again. There are so many other things we could have gone through. But I just want us to, I know the Holy Spirit is working to interpret for us. Whosoever has this hope in him purifies himself even as he is pure. Father, set our hearts on fire. You sent your son.